Hello and welcome to another Project Earthwork video where the three of us are coming together and we will all introduce ourselves in a moment to talk about the energies that are going on at the minute. It is a bit of a wild ride in terms of where the Earth's at, in terms of where the stars are at, in terms of where the moon is at. And we really wanted to come on here and have a bit of a chat with you, share our thoughts on the matters and also just share a little bit of support and guidance to help you through this time because we know it can be tough. And we really want to make sure that, you know, you're not alone and have a little bit of context to help you through. So Thanks I think so that's about it. So I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and I'm also just going to throw in here for those of you who have not yet seen that we are in Glastonbury next week doing a beautiful two day workshop uh, all about working with the earth, working with the water and the ancestors. Um, yeah, please do check out. I'm not going to bang on about it, but just a little reminder, please check it out. Um, there's loads of links everywhere and we would absolutely love to have you there. And I'm excited to talk about this because I'm with Karen. I think um, oh, it's been an intense since July for me personally. It just feels like it's been a fucking roller coaster. And um, yeah, and I'm excited actually about like what's happening now with the eclipse and the equinox coming up and all that good stuff. So I'm excited to just share some tips with you guys today on how to survive and manage all of this. I'm not sure I came with many tips. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Breathe. some truth, maybe not as many tips as you might like. Um, I think this time of year is super interesting because um, especially in the UK, we're very focused on like a back to school vibe. It's September. I must get things going. I must hit the ground running. Um, as much as I love new stationery um, and a pen that flows like the tears of Jesus, um, I think we need to slow down a little bit. I think we, and if I didn't just offend every Christian that possibly is watching this video, um, never mind. Sorry, I didn't mean to go on. Um, I think we need to slow down just a little bit. I think we need to kind of sit in September. Um, for me personally, stuff is coming up and I think I would love to run with that. However, I need to sit in that uncomfortable of what was summer and what is now autumn and then that darkness and sort of the inner cave time of winter. So I love September. I love talking about September. I'm probably going to say a lot of the things that I probably said last year. Um, but um, can we call them wise? I'm not sure. Maybe a little bit. Just a, a little bit. <laughs> we're calling them wise. We're calling them okay, wise. Okay, we're calling them wise. I love that. I've never heard that line before about the flaws like the tears of Jesus. And it might be my favorite thing I've ever heard. So there you go. Um, I love a good pen. Isn't it interesting, though, because... The thing is, equinoxes will come around every year and there are certain things that every year or indeed every six months, we're like, I'm back in this space again. Why? Once we sort of embrace cyclical living and cyclical awareness, we go, well, because it's equinox. But then you have the different flavors of it. We have the eclipses coming up, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And they're, they're, I was actually plotting out moons for next year as I was doing my sort of the work that I'll be doing next year and realized that next September, there is an eclipse bang on equinox. And I'm like, what? I'm already, I might just book a week off that week. Just, just well, heads up everybody, next September, Equinox, just book the day off, just the whole week. Just, and anyway. we won't be anywhere. We will not be available. <laughs> but if you're watching this in 2025, because we're currently hiding in caves, trying not to come out and speak to anybody, that's why. Anyway, um, so you then got that flavour. And this year, well, every year, there are then different flavours to it. You know, the beauty of, the beauty of embracing the cycles of, of, the whole of nature is you have the earth cycles, you have the lunar cycles, and then you have the wider cosmic cycles. You also have your own cycles, but we're not going to get into that right now. That's that's one for you to figure out. But that those bigger cosmic cycles, something that I'm a little bit obsessed with at the moment that I really want to speak to is this idea of Pluto transiting. And, you know, Pluto is currently, as we record this, having its last little dalliance in Capricorn before it moves into Aquarius I was going to say for good, but certainly for the next kind of what, nearly 20 years, basically. And Pluto is one of those signs that it takes, I think it's 280 years. I apologize to astrolo astrologers, I've got that number wrong, um, to go right the way around the sky. So this is the kind of thing that we will never, any of us, live to see a Pluto return. We will, we will be gone before our own Pluto returns, which is quite a 
you know, Pluto is the planet of death in the underworld. And it's quite a sobering thought to think that this on November the 19th, when Pluto transits, it's the last time any of us alive will see Pluto in Capricorn. And it's really a, a reminder of our own fragility and our own mortality. And it's also a really exciting thing because that that means we move into a whole new beginning of something that, we, you know, we wrap up a big, long chapter and we move into a whole new beginning in so many ways. And it's a beginning that we get to take the depth, the richness. You know, we, we talk about Pluto being the planet of the underworld, but let's be clear, we are all here as part of Project Earthworld as people who tend to revere and honour Earth. And when we talk about the depths in the underworld with Earth, what we're talking about is is the Earth itself. It is that deep, dark soil in which everything retreats to germinate and then springs up from a new life in the springtime. What we are talking about here is we are seeing something new preparing to germinate. We are seeing something new rising from the darkness, rising from the soil and preparing to germinate. And I think that's really bloody exciting. But, and, but, what it also means is we've got, I think it's since 2008, we were just discussing, weren't we? It's since 2008 that Pluto has predominantly been in, in Capricorn, other than a, a bit of a dalliance at the start and a bit of a dalliance at the end. It's been in Capricorn. Now, that means if you have kids, which is what we were just talking about here, both Charlie and Yolandi have kids born since 2008, that means your kids have never lived in another Pluto sign, ever. You have never, potentially, if all of your kids are in that, rate, in that range, you have never been a parent with Pluto in anything other than Capricorn, other than a few weeks here and there. So you're going to see massive shifts in those people and in those relationships and in yourself. But it also means for all of us, no matter you know your relationships with other people, this is the closing of a chapter that started in 2008. Now, if I think back to then, 2008, I was, what, 25. I was, I'd just come back from traveling the world. And I got home with all of this idealism being like, it's time to start another adventure. And then I had some really tough times and I had a lot of, you know, life did not pan out the way I anticipated it would. It's probably taken me all now to be like, no, it's okay. It is an adventure. That's by the by. Now, where, so where I am now is now almost this is an opportunity over this next, what, six weeks? We have an opportunity to look back to 2008 and go, what have I learned since then? What have I gained since then? Who have I become since then? This is why planets are retrograde, to, to ask us to go back and look again and say, okay, let me let me just review that so that I can move forward freshly. And we have an opportunity to do this in preparation for when that moves on November the 19th, we step into something brand new. And I actually think, although we didn't, in, sorry, I'm rambling, although we didn't intend to talk about any of this stuff in the workshop at Glastonbury, I actually think it's a really good one. You know, part of that weekend, we will be making a vow to connect to the land, to honor the land, to be the Gaia within us to awaken and for us to be her hands, her feet, her voice, her eyes, all of the things. Now, with that in mind, that means we step into an entirely new chapter for humanity with that vow made, with that grounding beneath us. And I don't know about anybody else, but I find that really fucking exciting, to be honest, really exciting. It's super exciting, isn't it? And I think there's, as we said, like sitting in in that soil, in that dirt right now with with that seed whilst it germinates is so important to not rush, to not overwater as well. If we want to use the visual of it, like to not just like throw everything that you've got at this new seed right now because it needs that reflection and that time. We're at that transitional point between how we say closure and completion but also new beginnings so it's sitting in that uncomfortable it's sitting in um what was what is and what is to come um and being okay with that not not pushing it I see a lot of people that are really excitable and that's great because it is exciting but sitting in the um in the chaos, which I think Yolandi wanted to talk about that she brought up earlier. So I will, sitting in the chaos, over to you. Yeah, the sure. Room. So I was saying to the guys, so talking about like being in the chaos. So for me, the, the unknown, 
Like if I feel into myself, the unknown feels like chaos because I don't know what's happening. There's no structure. I'm not sure where I'm going. I can't see like the future and I don't have a sense of like open clarity and ah, oh, right. So for me, that is a very, and it's a very personal thing and it can be very daunting. And um, I went to drumming circle on Friday evening and, um, and my drum didn't want to work. And I was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, and my drum was just all wobbly. She hasn't been wobbly for ages. I played her like a day before. Everything was fine. My drum was just like, don't want to be played. So now I'm in a room with 30 other women who are going at it and I don't have my drum and I'm not going to play another drum because I really love my drum. And I'm like with this and I'm like, you need to sit in the chaos of this. You need to sit in the chaos of 30 people banging drums and going and you just need to be still. And so I was like, ah, oh. so I closed my eyes and I had all of this like manicness, all of this loudness outside of me, but somehow I managed to drop into my body, back into my heart. And I was just like, I found the joy of sitting in the chaos. And I was like, oh. it was like my whole heart opened up and I'm just like, like everything that was happening, everyone's emotions, all of the feelings, everything was around me. But I was like in this complete and utter serene, like place of calm within myself, because usually I'd be like, oh my God, I'm uncomfortable. I need to move. And I just sat and it was the most beautiful thing. And my guides was like, this is where you need to be because the world is chaos. Everything, the energies are going to be chaos coming into September. Like all of the uncertainty is going to make us feel like, you know, we can't, we're uncomfortable. We just want to break out. We just want to do something. It's like, be still, sit like be feel what you're feeling and just and then it opened up and it was like something inside of me opened up and I was like this is what I need to do so for me the biggest message for this period of chaos that's coming is there's beauty in that chaos and you will find your strand of clarity and just peace and harmony within yourself if you allow yourself to be in it and not run away from it so like and like charlie said slow the fuck down like slow down stop and feel and listen so yeah pause, i just wanted to pause, share that right. sorry mm. pause, right mm. it's like you said before charlie when you were saying like it's the closure and the and the um completion it made me think when you said that about you know that thing if you finish a job and start another one and sometimes you'll do that thing where you have to finish a job on the friday and start another one on the monday or sometimes you break up with somebody and a week later you meet the person of your dreams and there's no space in between and it's it's awful. And, or it's wonderful, of course, but there's a real beauty when we have an ending and a beginning of sitting in the, in the, the, the bit between. And that feel, that always feels like chaos because you've got all of the closure of the old there and you've got all of who knows what, all the questions there. Yeah. But it's that chaos of sitting, we have to give ourselves those spaces because otherwise what happens is we repeat all of the new, all of the old patterns. We go into the new job or the new relationship, carrying all of the old patterns of the old job or the old relationship. And it becomes hard to actually make a fresh start. Mm. That yeah. chaos, that, that sort of unknown is, is the point of coercion. That is the point of germination where everything kind of melds together and that seed cracks. Like yes. that crack that Yolandi is yeah. on about, like that is the point that you're we're waiting for. That yeah. is why we wait. Yeah. If you wait, you're just going to end up with a. If you don't wait, even you're just going to have a really kind of weak, sickly tree that that, that hasn't really learned all of the lessons that it needs to learn the first time round, and it's popped out of the earth just a little bit too early. So <laughs> we're running yes. with the seed. We're running with the seed. <laughs> um, so that that chaos is is the cracking it is that point that we're that we're kind of resisting and mm -hmm. we know it's coming and Karen was talking earlier about everything that's going on in America and all these things that are building up and everything that's happening online you can see it it is there it is palpable it is building and we every household needs to sit in that uncomfortableness and have conversations about the uncomfortable ones too yeah. right we Charlie and I had a conversation the other day. I won't go into the detail of it. You can if you want to, you but about a really uncomfortable conversation in terms of privilege. And I think this is a thing, you know, Pluto, uh, if I go back to Pluto for a moment, Pluto is a generational planet. 
It stays in a sign so long that it shapes a generation. Its transit of the entire sky shapes an era. And I firmly, firmly believe, I keep saying this, and weirdly I was tagged in a comment before where someone said, my coach, Karen, keeps saying. Yeah, I do. I keep saying what we are witnessing now, we are witnessing, you know, every single day, if you go to a news website, you will see stories about women being horrifically killed by men. And they're just the ones who are on the news. Like, let's be clear. They are not the only ones that are happening. Yeah. I'm not going to go into the detail that now because it's triggering and we don't we don't need to do that. You can look at it and there is plenty. I firmly believe we are seeing the death of patriarchy. We are seeing the death throes of a system of oppression and of white supremacy that has held our planet and our species back for centuries. I firmly believe that. Now, that's not to say that tomorrow we wake up, you know, 19th of November, Pluto shift sign, and we wake up and everything oh, 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 doesn't happen like that. There is going to be chaos before that seed, before that seed germinates. There is going to be absolute chaos. We got two choices with that. We either burn it all to the ground or we sit in the discomfort of it and trust ourselves and whatever powers are at play. And I'm not saying we sit and we allow people to be killed. I'm not saying we sit and we allow awful things to happen. Of course we stand up. Of course we shout. Of course we complain. Of course we do all the things we need to do. We take a stand where we can. But all I'm saying is this isn't about we don't know best. But I think we can we can sit in the chaos of this generational transformation now and trust that there is something bigger and something better happening. Yeah. And we start that with ourselves. And asking ourselves why. Like the, the most powerful question we can be asking ourselves right now is, why does this feel uncomfortable? Why do I feel like I need to be applying action or running or doing or shouting or pushing into that response? rage phase which has its place and its time and its role and its importance and its power but sometimes it's not always the best step forward like why we've been asking a lot of questions in our household of why is this triggering why is this showing up why does this feel like a no like when opportunities are coming in why does this feel like a no is it based on fear is it based on past trauma or trigger or is it based on a not quite now or not just yet rather than a full no so why would be my my number one question when you're sitting in that chaos um and no matter what the answer is you've still got to sit there unfortunately <laughs> and I feel there's also you know like coming back into the the wisdom right the wisdom of the seed to know when to move so everything that is growing in nature understands that there is a right time because it listens to what it is doing when it's unfolding right like it's not going oh i need to open quicker because there's like this happening or whatever oh i think it might be nice if i was the first flower to bloom but it's like it knows it has an innate intelligence in it and part of what what we are being called to do right now is to listen to our own inner intuition our bodies that will be like yes take that step no sit still yes go there no don't do this okay, but you have to start listening because the earth is listening every single plant and tree and animal is listening to the earth it's listening to the cycles because it's it's wise it knows we've been disconnected from our wisdom so make time to find your wisdom you find your wisdom in the stillness you find your wisdom in the inspiration of like looking outside and seeing what's happening like with nature okay so go back there and listen to that the wisdom is in the sitting, observing, and listening to your own intelligence and your own wisdom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's my feeling. Agreed. Thanks. That's the tea. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Do you know what it made me think about when you said that? I always think in pictures, and it made me think about, like, The Wizard of Oz. When a house is spinning... You know, the, the, the power in it is when she gets sent back in the whirlwind or I can't remember how, or the twister, I can't remember how she gets sent back. But being able to click her heels together, close her eyes and say, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. To get there, she fought against the twister. She fought, you know, it was it was chaos. It was destruction. It was, there was a poor witch who got murdered along the way. You know, all of this stuff. But on the way back, she closed her eyes and she was able to focus on that intention 
There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Now, of course, she was still clicking her heels. Of course, she was still doing all the things. She still had a hold of her dog. You know, the important things in life. I'm not saying you don't do anything. But what I am saying is we have to stay focused on the bigger picture. Because it's in those moments that we can find the stillness and support ourselves through the chaos. Yeah. Yeah. We've been talking a lot recently about home being, well, in other words, but home being that place inside of us. Mm. So often in these times of chaos, we are tempted to look for external solutions. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're, what we're basically saying is just stay in your little seed, just cozy up, sit in the uncomfortableness of that and the damp and the dirt um, because there is no better answer than one that comes from inside mm. and a truthful one, a one that's underneath all of the trigger and the traumas and all those things, one like a heart knowing one. So mm. yeah, home is something we often in our spiritual industry look for um, outside of ourselves. Belonging is something that we look for out side of ourselves someone to belong a circle to sit in a place to go and actually um that belonging that we're looking for right now and that that feeling of safety can only be found in here so yeah and we are sending you love right now because it's it's not fun like we can laugh and joke about it here right now but it's it's not always fun yeah. it's not always easy so i think that's yeah, that's all I have to share really. I think today is just that we're sending you love and don't rush it. Beautiful. And like, yeah, that home in yourself, that's the most important thing. I mean, we all know, you know, our basic nature is that we need to belong. We need to feel safe. If you don't feel safe in you, then it's going to make it really hard. So find your safety in yourself. Start with you. Find that within you because home is safe. That's how we associate that. So make that a priority during this time. Find it. So, yeah. And remember, if you can't, you know, if you're feeling too wobbly even to do that, then as we always say, stand up, sit down, and remember that as you go through those movements, the earth is still holding you. You're not floating away. You're not flying into space. You're still being held no matter how you move your body. Remember that as you take, as you breathe out, when you breathe in, the oxygen is still there to fill your lungs. Because to Yolandi's point before, nature nature knows what she's doing. She's not rushing it. She's not. She knows what she's doing. And she has absolutely got your back. So if you're struggling to find that home inside of yourself, allow the earth to show you that home inside of yourself. To remind you that she values you because she gives you her support. She holds you. She gives you her oxygen. Allow yourself to be held so that you can sit in that place that will become home. And even if that itself feels chaotic right now, know that we believe, we trust, we know that there is a home inside of you that is that is supportive, that is safe, that can be that place of peace within the storm. And let, if our words can't get you there, let the earth get you there, because she will. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. I feel all warm and squishy now. <laughs> We're all squishy in our seats. <laughs> Warm, squishy, and off for, and we're now off to eat, drink pumpkin lattes uh, and all of that. And pack so in cases for next week. Yes. So, one last plug if you haven't booked your tickets yet, come with us to Glastonbury because a lot of this awesomeness will be in a room there. Why wouldn't you want to? <laughs> I will bring the best pens. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Anything else before we say goodbye? No. Awesome. Be safe okay. find your own version of love and we'll speak to you. Cool. Okay, have a beautiful day and uh, yeah, happy eclipse season.